I would like to begin with a quote from the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, and I quote, it is when the horizon is the darkest and human reason is bitten down to the ground that faith shines brightest and comes to our rescue. As a nation, we must have faith in India's resilience and capacity to overcome all odds. COVID-19, a virus of the size of 0.12 microns, has crippled the global, global economy with more than 300,000 dead and economic activity across the world stalled. Once again, central banks have to answer the call to the front line in defense of the economy. The recent release of macroeconomic data that for the first time revealed the damage wrought by COVID-19 brought forward the need for an off-cycle meeting of the Monetary Policy Committee, that is the MPC, in lieu of the earlier scheduled meeting uh, between uh, June 3rd to 5th, 2020. Over the last three days, that is 20th, 21st and 22nd, the MPC reviewed the domestic and global developments and their implications for the outlook. After extensive discussions, the MPC voted unanimously for a reduction in policy repo rate and for maintaining the accommodative stance of monetary policy as long as necessary to revive growth and to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 while ensuring that inflation remains within the target. On the quantum of reduction, the MPC voted with a 5 is to 1 majority to reduce the policy repo rate by 40 basis points, 40, 40 basis points from 4.4% to 4%. Consequently, the MSF rate and the bank rate now stand reduced to 4.25% and reverse repo rate stands reduced to 3.35%. Before I lay out the backdrop, the rational and expected outcomes of the MPC's decisions, I wish to thank the committee members for their valuable contribution uh, during the deliberations. I would also like to thank my colleagues in the RBI who have been working tirelessly in RBI's fight against COVID-19. My gratitude goes out to our teams for their intellectual support, analytical work and the logistical arrangements. A special word of praise for our team of what is now about 200 officers, staff and service providers who, has, who are working unstinted 24 into 7 in isolation away from their families in order to keep the essential RBI services available to the nation. Once again, I wish to express our admiration for the doctors, the healthcare and medical staff, police, law enforcement agencies, functionaries and personnel of the government, the private sector, banks and other financial institutions who have risen to the occasion day after day through the pandemic to ensure continuity in provision of all essential services. Our deepest gratitude to their families too. I would now like to provide an assessment of the current uh, macroeconomic uh, situation, both global and domestic. By all counts, the macroeconomic and financial conditions are austere. The global economy is inexorably headed into recession. The global manufacturing PMI contracted to an 11-year low in April 2020. The global services PMI recorded its steepest decline in the history of the index. Among advanced economies that have released GDP readings for Q1 of 2020, contractions were in the range of 3.4% to 14.2%. For emerging market economies, the growth rate ranged between 2.9% and minus 6.8%. EMEs face additional pressures in the form of capital outflows and asset price volatility from the bouts of turbulence afflicting financial markets. The plunge in crude prices has dried up budgetary revenues for oil exporters. On the other hand, oil importers have been denied terms of trade gains by the crushing blow to demand delivered by the pandemic. According to the UNCTAD, the value of global trade contracted by 3% in Q1. The volume of world trade can shrink by 13 to 32% in the current year as projected by the WTO. 
global financial markets have calmed after a turbulent period in March and volatility has ebbed. But markets have generally been disconnected from the developments in the real economy. Relatively unsung, global policy response by central banks and governments has been unprecedented. Let me now turn to the domestic developments. Domestic economic activity has been impacted severely by the two months lockdown. The top six industrialized states in India that account for 60% of our industrial output are largely, they are largely in the red and orange zones. High frequency indicators point to a collapse in demand beginning in March 2020 across both urban and rural segments. Electricity and petroleum consumption, which are indicators of day-to-day -day demand, have plunged into steep declines. The double whammy of, in terms of losses of both demand and production has in turn taken its toll on fiscal revenues. Investment demand has virtually been halted by a decline of 36% in the production of capital goods in March, which was coincident with a contraction of 27% in imports of capital goods in March and 57.5% in April. This is also evident in a fall of 91% in finished steel consumption in April and 25% shrinkage in cement production during March. The biggest blow from COVID-19 has been to private consumption, which accounts for about 60% of the domestic demand. The production of consumer durables fell by 33% in March 2020, accompanied by a 16% decline in output of non-durables. Similar indications are reflected in surveys of the fast-moving consumer space also. In the production sectors, industrial production shrank by close to 17% in March, with manufacturing activity down by 21%. The output of core industries, which constitutes about 40% of overall industrial production, contracted by 6.5%. In conformity, the manufacturing PMI for April recorded its surpassed deterioration to 27.4, spread across all sectors. All sectors. The services PMI plunged to an all-time low of 5.4% in April 2020. Amidst this encircling gloom, agriculture and allied activities have, however, provided a beacon of hope on the, bank of, on the back of an increase of 3.7% in food grain production to a new record. A ray, a ray of hope also comes from the forecast of normal southwest monsoon by the India Meteorological Department. By 10th May 2020, up to which the latest information is available, Kharif sowing was higher by 44%.